This is a semi-finished blank. And this is just one of the machines that we use here at the lab to turn a semi-finished blank into a finished lens. Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to MH Optical's YouTube page. Today, we're starting part one of a series where we talk about the surfacing process. We're gonna go each step of the process, machine by machine, and talk about what it takes to get a surface lens, to turn a semi-finished blank into a finished lens. We're gonna jump right into it here. I've broken down the surfacing process into about seven parts here, and we're gonna jump into it with number one. So, step one of the process is to figure out if you need a surface lens at all. Do you need a stock lens or do you need a surface lens? When you call the lab, they might ask you, do you want a stock lens or a surface lens? This is all part of the process. So how do you determine if you need a stock lens versus a surface lens? Well, we're gonna dive into that a little deeper when we do a video just on stock lenses versus surface lenses. But just a little tip here, here are some lenses that usually always get surfaced. One being a digitally surfaced progressive or any kind of digital lens for that matter. And we'll dive deeper into that in the next video. Next being a conventional progressive. Now these need to be blocked on a specific axis, so they're usually going to be surfaced. Three being flat tops or any kind of line bifocals. Those also need to be blocked on a certain angle. Polarized lenses usually need to be surfaced because of the axis they need to be blocked on. And lenses such as high prescriptions, special base curves, plus lenses to achieve a thinner lens and to get a cutout, as well as lenses that require prism. Now that we determine that our lens does indeed need to be surfaced, we're gonna move into step two, which is lens pick and compute. Now lens pick and lens compute go hand in hand. You need to pick the right lens in order to get the right compute at the other end. And what I mean by that is photochromic lenses, polarized lenses, single vision lenses, conventional progressives. Do you have to pick that type of lens blank to start with in order to get the right finished product? Things like frame wrap and decentration are also things that you might have to consider when picking the right lens blank. Now after we get an idea of what kind of lens we need to pick for this job, we're going to compute the job. The more information you can give the surfacing lab, the better. Things like panoscopic tilt, vertex distance, as well as refractive distance will give the lab the opportunity to make a custom lens that's going to be better for the patient. Now that we have a lens computed, we have a lens picked, we can put the job into the lab and get started with the actual surfacing process. Which brings us to step three, which is taping and blocking. Our first step is to apply a surface saver tape. This tape protects the front surface of the semi-finished blank, because remember, that is a done surface. We want to protect that at all costs through the surfacing process. Now we can move to the blocking process. Now in the blocking process, we're trying to achieve a couple of things here, one being attaching this chuck here to the semi-finished lens. This allows us to process the lens on the other machines after the blockers, on the generators, on the polishers. This is the actual thing that the machines hold to manufacture the lens. The other two things that we need to achieve during blocking are axis. Now if it's a line bifocal or a conventional progressive, we need to line that up with the markings that already exist on the lens. Otherwise, we're gonna have an off-axis lens in the conventional surfacing process if we don't line those on axis perfectly. And the last thing we need to achieve in blocking process is prism angle. We actually need to put an angle on the lens attached to the block piece. This will help us achieve decentration by moving the ocular center closer to the person's PD, as well as putting prescribed prism into the lens itself. Next, we'll move on to generating and laser engravings. Now, in this step is where we actually put the prescription in the lens. We take the semi-finished blank and grind away the back surface to the prescription of the lens. We use two kinds of cutters in the generator itself, one being the milling cutter and one being the turning cutter. The milling cutter is gonna take the bulk of the material off and the turning bit is gonna do the fine tuning of the lens, almost taking it down to a finished lens. Now this is where all those fancy lens maker equations come into play that you learned in optical school or while studying for the ABO. These are the machines that grind away the back surface of the lens, put the curves in the proper places, as well as put digital lenses and complex curves on the back of these lenses. Next, we need to put laser engravings on some of the lenses that require them. This is a machine that laser engraves the etchings as well as add power and sometimes tray numbers in our case to keep track of the lens throughout the rest of the process. Next, we're gonna move on to step five, which is polishing. The goal of polishing is to make a totally clear, translucent lens. If you were to de-block the lens after generating, it wouldn't be clear. So to achieve a clear lens, we need to polish the lens. In this process, we use a soft tool and we use a white polishing slurry that has some kind of abrasion in it to polish and take down just a microscopic millimeter 
off of the lens to achieve that clear lens. Now we're gonna move on to step six, which is hard coding. Now this is a topic that may not be so black and white. We need to figure out if a lens needs hard coding, such if it's a poly lens. Now if it's going to AR, it's going to get hard coding, whether through our spin coder, which is the next machine in the process, or it's going to skip that and get a dip coding over in AR. Now I already did a video on hard coding, but in the video for this series, we're gonna break down a couple other things that I think I may have missed in the first video. And lastly, we have deblocking and inspection. Now that we've gone through a hard coat, if we need it, our lens has been polished, we have a finished lens, however, it's still on a block. So we need to go through our deblocker, which is a manual machine that we physically remove the lens from the block. Once we do that, we remove the surface saving tape and then we wash the lens in a hot soapy water solution. After the lens is clean and dried, we actually put it through our inspection machine, which is our A&R Auto Mapper. This is a totally automatic inspection machine that actually gives us a go, no go check. And what I mean by that is it checks the sphere power, it checks the cylinder power, it checks the axis as well as the prism angle on the lens itself. This helps us to produce the most accurate lenses that we can provide as well as help us fix what may be going wrong in the lab somewhere else. This kind of inspection allows us to fine tune our machines so we can produce the most accurate lenses possible. So that's it, I broke the surfacing process into seven steps and we're gonna dive into each one of those steps in an individual video. This way we can better understand how to make a better lens and understand where our lenses are coming from. Maybe learn the limitations that the machines might have, the limitations of putting a certain RX on a certain base curve. So keep an eye out for those videos in the up and coming future and we'll see you in the next one.